Greetings to you wherever you're watching from. Uh, welcome to the Breed and Grow Financial Talk Point. Your host today, I'm Elab Wilson Mayengo. And with me, I have a finance guru, Mr. Francis Lugorovi Kavinogi, the Chief Finance Officer, Breed and Grow Business Home. Welcome, Mr. Lugorovi. Thank you very much. Today, we're talking shares, stocks, bonds, securities, and such like. Uh, in the near past, the talk around town, around Kampala has been shares, shares, shares. So many questions about shares, should I buy shares, should I not buy shares. Of course, the hype has been put up by the recent listing by MTN Uganda. And we are here today to have a brainstorming and a talking about shares. An expanded talk about shares, stocks and securities. To start with, Mr. Rogorogi. What are shares in a simple layman's language? What is what are shares? I'm not going to define shares. I'm just going to explain shares. Uh, when you start a business and you incorporate that business or you register a business with the Uganda Registration Services Bureau here in Uganda, that business becomes a company. It's called a company. Most times we have companies limited by shares. And that's why they're called limited companies. Many people have what they call limited companies, or they have that word limited at the end of the company name, which denotes that that company is limited by shares. So the shares we're talking about means the smallest portion of a company. So if, if you can divide your company into a hundred pieces, that means that you'll have a hundred shares and each share will have a value. So if, a if that company, which is divided into 100 pieces, is worth 100 million, that means that each share is worth 1 million. Okay. So simply put, a company, is, a company has shares, and the shares are the smallest components that okay. make up a company. To understand you well, smallest components in terms of its assets, its uh, ownership, it's because yeah. I understand the company has property, the company has ownership, the company has so what aspect of the company are we talking about here? Uh, we are talking about uh, all the valuable things that are owned by a company. So we put together all the valuable things owned by the company, which you call assets. Okay. And these these assets they can be fixed assets like buildings, land, vehicles, and all that plus the stock which is owned by the company, plus the cash which is in the bank and the cash which is at hand okay. or in the till, uh, plus the petty cash, okay. um, plus the debtors. Okay. When you put all that together and you remove the liabilities, you remove the things which the company owes to other entities, what we are left with is the net assets okay. or the things which are actually owned by the company. Okay. So those things which are owned by the company they translate into the company's equity. Okay. We call it the company's equity okay. or the company's ownership. Okay. And that's the amount which I talked about, the hundred million. Okay. Yeah. In the example I gave earlier. Okay. So it's basically the company's valuable resources. Okay. Yeah. So when I purchase or when I buy shares, say in MK Uganda, yes, what in effect has happened? What what has happened is that the original owners of MTN Uganda okay. have offered part of their ownership to you okay. to own. Okay. Yes. So, for example, if uh, the original owners of MTN Uganda were Francis Rugolo and myself, mm -hmm. and the lady at the camera said, uh, Motes Violet, and we had, for example, a hundred. 100% of the shareholding in mm -hmm. MTA, all the ownership in MTA. Mm -hmm. Actually, shareholding is the ownership. Mm -hmm. So when I say 100% shareholding, I mean 100% ownership. Okay. So if we had 100% ownership, Mutesi had 50% ownership and I had 50% ownership. Then we decide to list on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. When we list on the stock exchange, it means we are offering a certain percentage of our ownership. So, for example, if you decide to list 20% of our ownership on the stock exchange, mm -hmm. that means that Mutesi is losing 10% of her original ownership 
and I'm losing 10% of my revenue ownership. So we've offered 20%. And if, for example, you, Mr. Eli Wilson, my angle, you decide to buy that 20%, yeah. you, you are owning 20% of MTN, which was initially owned solely by two individuals, Lugolovi and Mutesi. Okay. okay. So now you are you're a third owner, but with a stake, oh, the, with an ownership percentage of 20%, and Lugolovi's percentage has gone to 40%, and notices has gone to okay. This is interesting. Uh, and and it, it intrigues a question within me. For example, we've seen so many profitable companies. Yeah. For example, in Uganda, MTN Uganda has been one of the biggest taxpayers. Mm -hmm. it's, the biggest, uh, 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 it's the biggest, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to think that by the time a company is the biggest taxpayer, then they're making money, right? Yeah, they're making money. Good profits. Why on earth would someone think of giving away ownership? Part of their ownership of a money making business. In other words, why would companies list to sell their shares or to sell their ownership? Yeah. Now, actually, let me first drive you back a little, okay. even before listing. Okay. Because companies issue shares even before listing on the stock exchange. Okay. Now, initially, when a company is born, it may be born by one individual or two individuals or three individuals. Now, when the company started, they usually start with uh, little money. Mm -hmm. They may start with a capital of maybe 10 million. Mm -hmm. Now, that company in its first year may have ten, capital of 10 million. By the end of the second or third year, may have capital work of 30 million. That's the investment put in by the owners, mm -hmm. the initial owners, or the primary owners. Mm -hmm. And that's the initial capital put in. Mm -hmm. Now, as the company is growing in its, in, in its initial stages of growth, this company may need more capital to expand its operations, okay. to expand its market share, okay. to, in, to, to add on the number of products it's uh, giving out to its clients. Mm -hmm. So, because the, these owners may not have the capital, they may invite other primary shareholders. Okay. So, it may issue shares, but to the primary level whereby it does not issue to the public. It's okay. not a public listing. Okay. So, in this case, it may invite uh, friends and family. Okay. So, if for example, I and you have a company mm -hmm. called Breed and Grow, mm -hmm. and that company wants to increase its capital and we don't have that uh, money between the two of us, we may call upon our friends, mm -hmm. like the lady at the set, which is Violet, to come and buy shares. Or we may call upon um, uh, our spouses, our spouses okay. family to buy mm -hmm. shares in the company. Our, we may call upon uh, even angel, angel investors. Mm -hmm. There are some companies. We, or individuals who are out there and they're looking out for, st for startups to invest their money. Okay. So you can invite those people to bring in their money and they become shareholders also okay. at a primary level. Now, that company continues growing. And for example, we had a 30 million cap capital and now our capital has gone up to 50 million mm -hmm. by adding uh, other investors who are bringing 20 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then we can grow, maybe after at year five, we may feel that we are the projects we want to pursue are far much bigger than than even the the few investors. Mm -hmm. We the initial investors and the additional investors who maybe that year three. So we may need uh, to expand from one region like uh, Uganda. We we'll be operating in central Uganda and want to expand to the whole of Uganda. Okay. And instead of uh, the fifty millions we have, we may need an extra fifty or even a hundred millions okay. to add on to our fifty to expand our company to a size of one hundred and fifty million in capital. Mm -hmm. So, when we lend that extra 100 or 50 million, and we can't get it from the few primary investors, mm -hmm. we, have, we may have to go out to the public. And so, in that case, we go to the, the stock exchange and we list. Okay. And when we make that initial listing, it's called the initial public offer. Okay. So, it's the first, as we heard in English, the first offer to the public. Yes. So MTN, what MTN, MTN did, for example, is its initial public offer. Okay. They offered part of their ownership or okay. shareholding to the public. Okay. So now, when you throw it out there to the public, you have many potential investors mm. with enormous resources mm. to contribute that required money. Mm. The example I gave of 100 million. So in that case, many times we companies invest uh, from the background I mean, I've given you, in order to increase their capital, okay. which capital they do not have by themselves. Okay. So because if, if you had the capital, 
in the company, there's no need for you getting extra capital from outside. Okay. So companies list or offer their shares in order to in, to increase their capital, okay. in order to expand their operations, okay. to introduce new products, okay. to expand their geographic horizons, okay. even to move out of maybe one country to go to the region, mm -hmm. uh, to increase to improve their human resource, to improve their management. To improve all areas which need capital, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And many times, by the way, these companies may not, in of themselves, require expansion mm -hmm. in those areas you have talked about. Mm -hmm. But then, these companies may be forced by competition from other companies. Okay? Yeah, okay. Just like a rumor was going around uh, mm -hmm. the MTN mm -hmm. IPO mm -hmm. that uh, MTN is being pushed by Airtel mm -hmm. Uganda to to increase more capital and therefore counter the push by the surge by, by Airtel Uganda. Mm -hmm. That because of the recent growth of Airtel Uganda, uh, MTN felt threatened okay. that it required to expand its operations further to counter the competition which was coming to its door. Mm. So some companies require to expand not for the sake of expansion but to beat of competition. Okay. If there's competition is coming so heavily against you, you may want to come up with better mm. and newer products okay. which your competition doesn't have. Okay. And in order to create those products, you will need capital, okay. which you don't have, or which you even your profits can generate. And in that case, you will get the capital to, to be. Wow, this is interesting. <laughs> Mr. Ugrobi tells us that companies list or companies choose to offer their ownership to the public for reasons of hyping or increasing their capital share or trying to make sure they have more resources for expansion, for outcompeting competitors and so many other reasons. Uh, there's a rumor that is going around that actually in some instances companies are forced by governments to sell off part of their ownership. I personally heard of this and I found it very unfair. Why would a government force me to sell ownership of my company? And is it true anyway that governments force companies to sell off their shares? You're very right. It's very true that uh, companies are forced by governments to sell off their shares to the public. Okay. And uh, in this instance of uh, the rumor you heard of MTN, it's not actually a rumor, it's a fact. Okay. When MTN applied for a license renewal in Uganda, the government of Uganda set as a precondition of renewing the license that MTN should list a percentage of its shareholding to the public. Mm -hmm. And the reason why governments go on to force companies mm -hmm. to list on the stock exchange is because these companies may be very profitable and when they're very profitable they make lots of money which money is shipped abroad. Okay especially when they are foreign companies, mm -hmm. like MTN is. Mm -hmm. So when this money is shipped up abroad, we call it capital flight. Okay. The money which would have been reinvested back in Uganda, or which would have been used by Ugandans to buy more products and services, and in the end, increase our GDP. This money goes abroad and it benefits uh, foreigners, mm -hmm. not Ugandan. So by the government of Uganda forcing a company or a foreign company to list on the stock exchange, it means many Ugandans are going to buy a cake of the company. Okay. And when they buy a cake of the company or a portion of the company, they are going to share in the dividends okay. or profits mm -hmm. which the company has made at the end of the financial year. Mm -hmm. And when they share in those profits, these Ugandans are going to reinvest that money in other businesses okay. or they are going to they're going to spend this money on goods and services and they're going to improve our economy. Okay, that's it. Oh, interesting. So governments actually protect their economies by sometimes forcing companies to sell big companies or profitable companies to sell part of their ownership yeah. to the indigenous people. Especially for especially companies. for foreign companies. Yeah. Very interesting. Please keep it brilliant, bro, financial point, and we shall be coming back soon. Once again, welcome back to the Breed and Grow Financial Talk Point. 
I'm your host, Ilana Buyosod Mariengo, and with me I have the finance guru, Mr. Ngorobi Francis Kabinu, the chief finance officer of Britain Grow Business. When we're talking stocks, we're talking shares, we're talking securities. In our previous segment, we saw what shares are and why actually companies choose to list or to sell the shares to the public. Uh, we also looked at why MTN, for example, a very lucrative business, would go in to sell part of their ownership to other people. In this segment, Mr. Lugorobi, we want to understand why would one ever consider investing in buying shares or in buying stocks? As they usually called. Thank you very much for that question. Any individual who has available funds to invest would choose the path of buying shares listed on the stock exchange because of several reasons. The first reason can be that this person wants to go in bed with individuals who are knowledgeable enough who have enough experience, who have enough expertise and skills to run a good business. Okay. And this has been shown in history of that company wants to buy the stocks or the shares from. So the reason this person is going into buying, for example, MTN shares is because this person knows that MTN has a long history of good stewards who are running a business so well. So by going into MTN and buying shares from MTN is going to share in their expertise, okay. in their knowledge, in their skills, in their experience. So they are getting the benefit of uh, these people who are running MTN, for example, and using that that uh, benefit to make profits. So in other words, instead of risking mm. their money mm. in a startup, yeah. they would rather put their money in a company that has a record definitely, of running good business. A sustainable okay. business. Okay, they're going to the second reason why people, why people even dare go into buying shares, okay. is because they are spreading their risks. Okay, by if for example, myself or yourself uh, had maybe fifty millions to invest, mm -hmm. and uh, I had an option of starting my own company, mm -hmm. another option of buying shares in, in an already established company. The first option of starting my own company, a new company which has no track record, which has no history behind it, which has no profitability behind it, is very high risk. Okay. Because this 50 million can easily become 30 million at the end of the year. Okay. Or oh, I may lose it all okay. to real investment. Mm -hmm. But by me going into MTN Uganda, which has a long lucrative history, which is the largest taxpayer in Uganda, it means that uh, it has a track record and my investment is a sure investment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the 50 million, if I put it into MTN Uganda, will become maybe uh, 60 million at the end of year two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which guarantee I do not have if I buy, if, if I start my own business. Okay? Okay, okay. So in that way, I'm reducing my risk of investment. Okay. So the second reason why people actually buy shares is that they're doing away with a high risk of investment. They're trying to mitigate risk. Yeah, to, to, yeah. I understand, I get that. Definitely. Okay. So uh, talking risk, yeah. We have so many options. Mm -hmm. We have real estate, we have buying stocks and shares, we have uh, trade mm -hmm. in merchandise. Mm -hmm. All those are various options where one could put their money. Mm -hmm. Why would one consider stocks mm -hmm. over real estate, let's say apartments, mm -hmm. let's say over uh, trade? I could go to China, I could go to Turkey, I could go where, get clothing, get shoes and what. Why would one consider uh, buying shares in the place of the other two options. Actually, thank you very much for that arm of the question. It's not an either or, okay? In in, okay. in financial investment, okay? It's uh, we call it an investment portfolio, okay? Okay. When we're advising people to to invest, or when you're spreading the risk. Okay. Or investment, okay. we actually don't advise people to put all their eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. We don't advise that they put all your all your capital in shares, mm -hmm. or put your, all your capital in in real estate, mm -hmm. or put your capital in uh, in commerce, mm -hmm. whereby you can buy stuff from from China or Dubai and then you resell in Uganda. No, mm -hmm. actually, what we do, uh, like in Britain, Group Business Home, if you're an investor and you have like hundred million shillings. 
to invest you and you come before us we, we advise you to spread your, your your risk of investment by having a portfolio okay. a portfolio means that you have you, you, you have a conglomerate of uh, investment options before okay. you okay. where you can put your money and these facets of investments are found in the investment portfolio and they include high risk investments which are usually high return investments because they give higher percentage of profits then we have uh, medium risk investments which of course the risk is uh, medium or moderate and also the returns are moderate and then we have low risk investments these low risk investments they usually require more capital to invest and the money returns in a longer period of time mm -hmm. so they, in the short term it's a, a low return investment okay so usually when an investor chooses to put for example 100 millions out for investment mm -hmm. uh, we advise them to break it down into portions to spread it across spread it across okay uh, to put one portion in high risk investments mm -hmm. another portion in medium risk investments mm -hmm. another portion in low risk investments mm -hmm. why do you do this mm -hmm. we want them to not to over risk their investments okay. in high risk investments mm -hmm. because the high risk investment as the name sounds it can be a bust okay yeah it can go wrong and you lose all your money mm -hmm. But when it goes right, you get so much in profits compared to other investments. Mm -hmm. For example, investments in uh, in retail shops, in supermarkets, in hardware, in commercial enterprises like uh, imports mm -hmm. and uh, sale in Uganda, mm -hmm. and those are high risk investments. Mm -hmm. But usually, they have a problem whereby if it goes wrong, it will go south badly. Mm -hmm. Then, when it comes to medium risk investments, they're like shares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the returns are moderate, they're not as high as those in the high risk end, but then the, the chances of losing chances of all your money are, are also moderate, okay. they're low, they're low. Mm -hmm. it's very hard for a listed company to go bust, mm -hmm. because it has safeguards uh, mm -hmm. given by government, mm -hmm. by the stock exchange, and uh, of course the information flow is better, mm -hmm. so you can easily know when things are going south and you sell your shares, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the low risk investment, like uh, real estate, mm. it's uh, the risk of losing out on an investment as so so mild, also limited, also mm. low. Mm. But still, even the return, for example, you can get back your your initial capital investment in eight years. Mm. Mm. Whereas in a high risk investment, you can get back your your initial investment in two to three years. Okay. Yeah. So when we are encouraging people to invest, for example, in shares, mm. shares will be just. A portion okay. of their investment capital mm -hmm. and the rest will be put in high risk and the other one in low risk investments okay wow talking shares talking stocks talking securities yeah. i'm with uh, a finance guru mr logoro Kabili francis the chief finance officer of breed and grow business home uh talking shares still yeah. we had uh, we've had in Uganda, for example, mm. several companies over the years mm. listing. In fact, almost at the, at the end of every bulletin, mm. we have a business segment, mm. every news bulletin, mm. on every TV show in Uganda, we have a business segment where they show us the stocks and how they're performing in the market. They show us the dollar versus mm. the shilling, the euro versus the shilling, and all that information. Mm. So the, the, the aspect or the idea or the, the transaction of buying and selling of shares is not new to Uganda. Definitely. Of course, what MTN Uganda did this time round, mm -hmm. I think is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. It came and brought this big hype, mm -hmm. big hype about selling and buying of its shares. Mm -hmm. It's made it a very big point. Everyone is talking shares in Uganda today. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen, or what I've seen from the messages I've been receiving, the question I've been receiving in Inbox, mm -hmm. is that almost everyone is starting to consider the idea of buying shares, mm -hmm. and specifically, in MTN Uganda because of the hype they created about the whole issue and the whole idea of selling part of their shares. Mm -hmm. You call it the IPO, initial public offer. Yeah. I sense excitement. I sense a lot of hype. Mm -hmm. Is this enough to drive a decision for one to buy shares? Of course, we have the history for MTN, for example, in Uganda. MTN is a, has been a very big company mm -hmm. and is a big company in Uganda. Is that enough? The hype and the size of the company, are they enough 
for one to make a decision to go ahead and buy shares or there's more that one should look out for thank you very much for that uh, question before you and me or any individual out there who wishes to buy shares who has capital who has funds to invest in shares before they make up their mind to buy shares in a particular company mm. they should do a background check okay and even before they do that background check they should inform themselves with the financial dynamics behind shares okay they should meet a consultant they mm -hmm. should do some research mm -hmm. and learn more about shares mm -hmm. and get information on what shares are how shares operate how shares reward how shares grow how shares may fail you okay and they look wow. also on the other side of it mm -hmm. so they should first get the information about shares in general mm -hmm. and how they operate mm -hmm. Then after that, they should do a background check on the company in which they want to buy shares. Mm -hmm. They should go back in history to who started that company, mm -hmm. how it has come growing over time, mm -hmm. who are the owners, the majority shareholders, mm -hmm. and what are their other interests, okay. for example. Mm -hmm. What are they invested in? Mm -hmm. What is their experience mm -hmm. in management mm -hmm. or in running businesses? Mm -hmm and in owning other property. Mm -hmm. How are there other companies or ventures? How are they grown? Mm -hmm. This is going to put your mind at, uh, at peace because you know that, for example, if I go to MTN and I know MTN has uh, the core investors are sound people and they, have no in, 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 they, have, they are invested in good ventures. They're not invested in other companies which are dodgy and they don't have a bad track record. So the majority shareholders are going to be the bedrock of your investment because they're the ones who make the bigger decisions. Mm -hmm. As you know, with shares, you the majority shareholder is the one who makes decisions. Okay. Yeah. The, your step determines your voice mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. decision making. Fair game. Yeah. So the other factor you're going to look at in uh, before you decide to buy shares in a particular company mm -hmm. is its profitability history. Mm -hmm. You are investing in a, in this particular company because you want you want either to have to reap profits on a yearly basis, mm -hmm. or you want your stock to grow. Mm -hmm. There are some investors who are not so much interested in uh, in getting profits every year, mm -hmm. but they want their share to keep growing. Mm -hmm. For example, if I invested ten millions in MTN Uganda today, and uh, I don't want to, I'm not so much interested in, in getting dividends. I may be interested in having my stake of 10 of 10 millions grow for example the 10 millions may be worth only 0.1 percent mm -hmm. of mta mm -hmm. but that's 0.1 percent in two years time may have grown to 15 million mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. in that if i'm to sell the shares at that time they'll be worth 15 million okay. so i would have gained mm -hmm. good value mm -hmm. uh, then the other shares as i say i may be interested in getting a dividend at the end of the year mm -hmm. so i should investigate the the dividend declaration policy of that company. Does that company declare dividends every every mm. every year? Mm. And does it pay out? Mm. Because some companies don't. They let your stock grow mm. and they reinvest most of the money back into the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So depending on your objective, you should investigate that. Mm -hmm. Then the other factors we, we, which you consider is uh, is the, the return on investment, mm. the percentage. The percentage return on investment. For example, you look at the the profit vis-a-vis -vis the the capital invested mm -hmm. in the company. Mm -hmm. If that company, for example, there may be two companies you may be considering to buy shares from, mm -hmm. and one company has, uh, for example, for every share, for every share you have a return on investment of twenty percent in one company, mm -hmm. and the other company have fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. So you are more bound to go with the company which has twenty percent in that case. All right, all right. This is what I'm getting. Yeah. That a decision to buy shares. Mm -hmm considers among others one the company's reputation yeah, definitely. the company's philosophy of operation mm -hmm. the company's philosophy on dividends and pay, or company policy right. on payment of dividends mm -hmm. but even then mm -hmm. it is not wise mm -hmm. for one to simply look and consider one company yeah, while making a decision for investment in shares right. one should have at least an array of companies, of companies to compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. Very interesting point. Mm -hmm. So as much as you're looking at buying shares in MTN, yeah. get another company to compare with and contrast with. Yeah. Return on investment, mm -hmm. dividend policy, company poli uh, 
philosophy of operation, majority shareholder, and their history mm -hmm. in the business world. Wow, 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 this is interesting. Absolutely. What, what, what you pointed out, or what I pointed out earlier, and you're mm -hmm. summarizing, mm -hmm. are the business reasons why you should buy shares in a particular company. Okay. But there are also social reasons why someone buys shares. Before yeah. we switch to the social reasons, yeah. about profitability, mm -hmm. for example, I could make, uh, my company could make, let's say, 20% profit, yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. this year. Next year it makes 10%, mm -hmm. the other it makes, again, 15%. Mm -hmm. It's a staggered kind of yeah. profit mm -hmm. area across the years. Mm -hmm. Then I have another company which is making 20%, 22%, 25%, 30%. Then I have another company that is making 20%, 21, 20, 19, 20, 21. Which is flat. Sort of flat. Mm -hmm. One is a bit increasing every year. One is a bit flat. Mm -hmm. And the other is staggered. Mm -hmm. And we could have one that is declining. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Yeah, actually that's the profitability issue which I need to expound on maybe. Okay. Uh, when you're looking at profitability, you not only look at uh, how much profit a company has made, mm -hmm. or particular companies have made, and the trend compare them. Mm -hmm. But you also look at the trend. Profit trend. The profit trends. Okay. Now, the best profit trend is the latter one you talked about. Okay. That's the profit trend whereby there is a uh, growth mm -hmm. in percentage terms. Mm -hmm. If, for example, if for, let me use an example of MTN. If, mm -hmm. for example, MTN this year, in five years back, it made profit of, uh, for example, 1.5 billion in other shillings, mm -hmm. and the following year, it made a profit of uh, 1.6. Seven billion Ghana shillings, and the third year it made a profit of uh, one two point one billion Ghana shillings, and the fifth year it made a profit of uh, two point five billion Ghana shillings. Mm. We are looking at a smooth, dependable trend of growth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then the other intermediate one, or the standard one, which is high, low, moderate mm. in some years, mm. that's a very risky company to buy in mm. if it had that trend. Mm. Yeah. So the best type of uh, of trend to follow in a company is the one which is the smooth one, mm. smooth mm. growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you're sure if you put in your money, uh, your your shares are also going to grow at that mm. at that historical rate. Mm -hmm. Because in, in finance and account you look at mm. history to help us uh, determine the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The business factors one should look at before making a decision to invest in shares. And uh, Mr. Lugorovi tells us that there's more and beyond just the business aspect of making a decision to buy shares. That there's the social bit of it. Yeah, there is. Take it on. The social bit, there, there's some investors, especially these are usually more wealthy investors. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when, when you are out of the house and bustle of bread and butter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't try to look at the profit at the end of the day. Mm. You look at other grander things in life. Mm -hmm. We look at uh, issues like uh, social responsibility. Okay. We look at how this company helps out the needy, mm -hmm. the poor. Mm -hmm. How this company treats its workforce. Mm -hmm. How this this company treats the suppliers. Mm -hmm. How this company pays back to the government mm -hmm. in taxes. Mm -hmm. If a company dodges taxes, then a social investor wouldn't. Buy shares in that company, have a profitable team. Mm -hmm. If a company mistreats its uh, workers, mm -hmm. if a company mistreats its suppliers, there are companies which are very profitable, but when it comes to dealing with suppliers, you supply them the raw materials, they pay them peanuts, mm -hmm. and they pay them late. Mm -hmm. They cheat them basically. Mm -hmm. Gender policy. Gender policy. Mm -hmm. There are companies which, uh, which deal with terror, ter terror organizations. Mm -hmm. So if a company deals with terrorist organization, then you would you wouldn't be buying shares in mm. that company, but probably it is mm. if you're a social investor. Mm. So they, there's a trend nowadays among social investors or wealthier investors who are out of the hustle and bustle of life mm. and they have reliable monies and they look at those factors. Mm. Mm. There are companies, there are people who won't buy shares in companies which have politicians who are running dictatorial regimes mm -hmm. investing in those companies. Mm. Mm. They don't want to to, they don't want to mix life with darkness, mm, 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 if I may put it. Mm. So, there are also those factors. Of course, we have the ratio bit of it also coming in. Yeah, there is, yeah. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. they, if, if the companies are discriminatory in uh, treating, uh, if, for example, in, in Europe, you are, you are investing your money. For example, you can invest your money, by the way, internationally. Mm -hmm. You don't have to invest only your money in Uganda. Okay. You can invest your money in the US, in a company this is in the US. Microsoft. Yeah, you can. You're talking about Apple. Yeah, if you're, you're talking Apple. about uh, yeah. Amazon. So if, if you find there is a company, you want to invest in Uganda, and this company discriminates against its workers mm -hmm. on racial grounds, mm -hmm. a, a black investor may not invest in that company, mm -hmm. for example. So all those come, those factors come into play over and above the business factor. Yes, shares are a business decision, mm -hmm. but there are other factors. Which factors might which might in turn affect the business operations, operations of the company. By the way, yeah. For example, if, if a company is not able to attract mm -hmm. a good social reputation, yeah. then you risk highly when you choose to buy shares in it. Because its growth is, uh, its future is, it could, could be bleak, yeah. yeah. Wow, interesting. <laughs> what one should look out for or what one should consider before they make the decision to buy or to invest in shares. Mr. Lugolobi Francis Kavinuri, the Chief Finance Officer of Breed and Grow Business Hall, is taking us through shares. Uh, we're winding out on today's Breed and Grow Financial Talk Point. And I would like to conclude by asking Mr. Lugolobi to give us or to throw more light on this aspect of buying our investing in shares. Mm -hmm. For example, MTN Uganda listed recently in Uganda. Yes. It's, a, it's a talk around town. Definitely. And among the people invited mm -hmm. are all Ugandans and all companies in Uganda. Mm -hmm. I look at agencies or companies like uh, NSSF who is a very big dog in Uganda when it comes to investment. To buy shares. We're looking at insurance companies mm -hmm. coming in to buy shares in Nigeria, Uganda with billions of money. Yeah. For example, if let's say NSF comes in and buys with 20 billion, mm -hmm. just giving an example, mm -hmm. what does that translate into? To me, who is coming in with, say, 1 million Uganda shillings or even less? Because mm -hmm. I heard that the first, uh, I read that the first, the initial allowable sum that can buy shares in MTN Uganda for example, is 100,000 so Uganda shillings. Yeah. So if I pay 100,000 Uganda shillings to MTN to buy shares and NSSF comes in with 20 billion, mm -hmm. where does that put me? Is it a wise decision for me if I have only 100,000? Thank you very much for that question. That question also poses another question that who should buy shares? Okay. Yeah, because not every Tom, Dick and Harry should buy shares. Okay. Uh, you may have 100,000 Uganda shillings, mm -hmm. but if you buy only one share with 100,000 Uganda shillings, mm -hmm. and for example, MTN declares a, a dividend, mm -hmm. and you have an, a return of 5,000 shillings at the end of the year, mm -hmm. that 5,000 shillings may not mean much to you, mm -hmm. to your per capita, mm -hmm. to your, to your well-being. Mm -hmm. So many times, it makes uh, more sense mm -hmm. for an individual with a good sum of money mm. which can return a grander sum, a mm. bigger sum mm. as a dividend mm. for them to invest that money mm. or which can translate into a bigger growth in shares. For example, if you put in 100,000 and it grows by 50% over three years, mm. then you'll have only 150,000 mm -hmm. over three years. Over three years. Over three years. Oh, but if yeah. another individual Invested 10 million shillings, they will have 15 million mm -hmm. over three years. Mm -hmm. You get me? So, the person who should have who should buy sh shares should be someone with substantial capital, mm -hmm. just like in real estate. Mm -hmm. You need a, a substantial sum to buy the land mm -hmm. and put up the property. Minimum capital yeah. requirement. requirement. Yes, yeah. there are minimum capital requirements even when it comes to shares. Okay, though they are thinking as told you they can buy a share at 100,000, but buying one share may not make much sense mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the business sense. Mm -hmm. So, you should gauge, you should gauge your your capital mm -hmm. before you start investing. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. so because you are, you, you are, you're not competing well enough with with an NSSA for an insurance company, mm -hmm. which is buying shares worth billion mm -hmm. when you're putting one hundred thousand one hundred thousand as a, a stock purchase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Maybe just want to close. Yeah. I've heard that it is not true that even when a company makes profits. Mm -hmm they'll essentially pay back the dividends. Mm -hmm. That there are years that companies will make profits and they'll keep paying back. Actually, I, I, I just talked about it earlier, mm. very briefly. Uh, there is even a, a third scenario. There are some companies which, which don't even pay out 
dividends at all. Wow. Yeah. And those companies, they the shares as well as are meant to grow. So when you're making your investment decision, that's why I said you look at the dividend declaration policy of the oh, company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 If a company does not declare dividend, that means that the aim of the company is to keep growing your mm-hmm. shares, mm-hmm. not to actually reward you with, uh, with the dividends. dividends. Okay. Yeah. And that's why there's been another type of share. There's, 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 there's what we call ordinary shares, mm. which uh, which 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 give you which give you voting rights and uh, and all that, mm. but uh, they do not necessarily give you dividends at the end of the year. Okay. There's what we call a preferential share. Mm-hmm. A preferential share is a share which you buy, which guarantees you a particular amount of money, which is your percentage of your share mm-hmm. payable out to you every year as okay. a dividend. Okay. So if you want dividends. Buy a preferential share. If you all companies with preferential shares, if you want uh, you if you want share growth, then go for a company which doesn't declare dividends. So you're right in your questioning. There are companies which do not declare dividends, and there are even companies which are meant to declare dividends. On paper, they don't declare dividends, but at the end of, at the end of the day, they politically play around and don't declare dividends. So you expect a company to declare dividends and you have an ordinary share or shares in that company, ordinary stock in that company, but you expect it to declare dividends and they don't declare dividends. The way you can mitigate this is to look at what I call the dividend declaration policy mm-hmm. of the company. If this company has a history in the past 10 years, every year it has been declaring and paying out mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. dividend mm-hmm. to its shareholders. Mm-hmm. Then, if you are looking at, at dividends for as a reason for your investment, then invest in that company. But if this company has had weird years where it has made high profits, and in those years it has chosen not to declare dividend, yet expect to declare dividend, the big shots, the major shareholders, declare uh, no dividends at all at the end of that year. Then the next year they declare, and the other they don't declare. Then don't don't invest in that company if you are wow. looking for dividends. Wow. Wow. There's just more to shares. We have ordinary shares, we have preferential shares. What is MT New Vendor selling and at what price is it selling? What type of shares? There's something more for you to look at and to consider. Once again, it was the Breed and Grow Financial Talk Point and your host, Eli Abuiso Mayengo. See you next time. Keep it locked.